Alright men, today we'll be assaulting the insectoid hive to keep our colony safe. Any questions or complaints? None? Good. Let's go. Charge! Wow, that was tough. Good thing I made it out alive. What about the pawns? <sighs> Their lives don't matter. I can always recruit more. <laughs> so let's talk about infestations. Infestations are a major event type in RimWorld where a bunch of creepy alien insect toys start spawning within 30 tiles of your colony. This can happen either randomly or as part of a quest. Once this occurs, you'll need to clear the infestation out or it'll keep spawning more and more hostile insectoids until your colony gets overrun. I'll be explaining more about the mechanics of infestations, types of creatures, and how you can deal with them in this video. Plus, extra content from the Better Infestations and Vanilla Factions expanded Insectoid mod. Before we dive into the details of infestations, remember to hit the subscribe button down below and like this video too. First up, let's talk about where infestations can spawn. Yeah, I mentioned within 30 tiles of your colony, but in the base game, infestations can only occur on overhead mountain tiles with a temperature higher than 17, my bad, negative 17 degrees Celsius, meaning you'll be safer if you're in a cold biome or far away from mountains. Even if the temperature isn't negative 17 degrees Celsius, as long as it's lower than negative 8 degrees Celsius, the chance of infestations is reduced gradually with each degree of heat loss. Of course, it'll create complications for your colonists if it's too cold, but that's another matter. To lower the chance of infestations, good lighting is also important. In the better infestation mod though, all this is thrown out the window, infestations can now spawn pretty much anywhere except ice biomes, meaning you can't get complacent even if you're not building near a mountain. Having said that, the insectoids still have preferences, primarily warmer, rocky areas and dark caves. Building colonies or structures in caves reduces infestation risk by removing potential high spawn points. A handy feature added to this mod is the Infestation Chant Cell Finder, which highlights potential spawning areas. Note that the mod also adds naturally occurring hive colonies across the world map. These colonies are already fully developed and you can explore the edges to find valuable from the corpses of pawns at straight too close. Occasionally, like the base game's raiders, these hive colonies can also stage raids against your own colony. Keep in mind that wiping out pre-existing hive colonies doesn't increase or decrease infestation spawn chance in any way. It's just an extra gameplay feature. In the faction expanded insectoid mod, two more event types are also added that spawn infestations. Infested ship crashes, which you can ignore by avoiding the ship wreckage, and giant infestations. Supersized infestations is what those are. The base game only has three insectoid species in high mega scarabs and mega spiders and spillipedes mega scarabs are the most basic form of insectoid aside from the infestations they can be found naturally in desert and extreme desert biomes as well as inside ancient shrines they possess shells made of elytra which provides them a degree of damage resistance taking 10 percent less blood damage and 40 percent less sharp damage when killed mega scarabs can be butchered for insect meat one interesting fact is that you can tame and train these mega scarabs to become guard dogs or guard insectoids if the, you prefer the term. The second tier of insectoid is the spillipede, a sheep-sized centipede which only appears in infested areas. Compared to the mega scarab, it's slower moving but also deadlier in combat. 4 to 5 damage versus 6 to 7 damage and only has 10% damage resistance to both sharp and blunt weapons. You can also tame it like a scarab. Third, we have the mega spider, more durable versus sharp weapons than the spillipede but less Less than the Mega Scarab. It's the largest and most dangerous insectoid in the base game. The Mega Spider is capable of dealing a whopping 7 to 12 damage per hit and also has heavy resistance against range attacks. Fortunately, it's the slowest out of the three insectoids, so you get sufficient time to prepare a defense when you see one coming. Feel free to try and tame it, but make sure your pawns have the appropriate skill level or you'll be in trouble. What? Three types of insectoid enemies isn't enough? What are you, some kind of masochist? Uh, okay, okay, fine. Fine, fine. If you want more variety, the 
factions expanded mod adds a lot of insectoid enemies and potential allies, but both discoverable in the wild as well as able to be grown via genetic engineering. Like the better infestations mod, it adds hives across the game map as a separate faction. If you're worried about a mod conflict, there shouldn't be a problem as there's little overlap in way of the features they modify. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the creatures it adds. Note that the creatures I'm about to list won't spawn in a normal infestation event, which only produce the base three creatures. Instead, the mod adds a new large infestation event to introduce them. Firstly, the cornerstone of every large hive, the insectoid queen. She's a pretty weak creature and can't really fight despite her size, but despite that, the queen is a priority target. Like real insectoid queens, she can pump out lava quickly, which means you'll need to kill her to cut off any reinforcements. Killing the queen also has the added bonus of making all nearby insectoids flee from combat. The insectoid larvae a queen produces are harmless and easily taken down, as shown here. But if left long enough, they can metamorphose into random adult insectoids, ranging from a queen to other deadlier variants, which I'll cover shortly. Next, let's have a look at the Megaspeed, a massive living siege weapon. Owing to its size, the Megaspeed is incredibly slow, but makes up for it with a powerful attack that can easily tear through pawns, rocks, or walls. It can dig to bypass or undermine fortification, but its lack of speed makes it vulnerable to hit and run tactics. And then we have... The Gigalocurst, a large hunter drone. Capable of flying long distances, it can easily bypass enemy lines and pick off unsuspecting targets with heavy attacks. The Gigalocurst is notably the only insectoid enemy that can fly, whether in the base game or this mod. It's essentially a stronger version of the normal Mega Spider, which leads the charge in insectoid raids and also serves as a maid for the queen. Take it down quickly at all costs. Don't mind Larry over there, he'll be fine, I hope anyway. A have you been enjoying the video so far? Finding it informative? If you are, remember to subscribe to the channel and like this video too. If you do, I won't feed you to the insectoids. So you've got an infestation going. With all those creepy crawlies roaming around, what exactly happens during an infestation though? As mentioned earlier, during an infestation, hives will spawn along with insectoids to defend the area around their hive. A single valid tile, in reference to the requirements mentioned prior, will be selected by the game to create a hive, after which hives will be spawned in a certain radius around it regardless of the validity of the other tiles. Any intruders will be chased by all insectoids up to a range of 30 to 35 tiles away. Beyond that threat range, the insectoids will break aggression and return to their hive. Sounds simple, not quite. You can't just leave a hive alone. Even if pawns don't provoke it, the insectoids will continuously try to expand their hive by clearing rocks and terrain. And walling them in won't work as they can burrow. If a hive is left unattended long enough, it'll eventually overtake your base. These insectoids are capable of easily killing your colonists and eating through power conduits. So letting an infestation get out of control is a very bad idea. This expansionist behavior is further built on by the Better Infestation mod. To sum things up, when a hive spawns, it creates two groups of insectoids, one defensive and one offensive. The defending group maintains the hive, expands it, and attacks intruders, while the offensive group slowly hunts and brings back spoils, from wildlife to even dead pawns. As a hive grows and reproduces, it unlocks more offensive groups, up to a maximum of three. Hives are generally asleep in the day and active at night. When the defending group spawns in enough caretakers, the hive has a chance to spawn a queen, which has the job of creating new hive. Every couple of days, the queen picks a location on the map to spawn another hive. Queens also contribute a 30% spawn rate bonus to the hive they're in charge of. Note that one hive can only produce one queen, so killing it makes the hive lose its bonus and remain unable to spawn another. Multiple queens can be active at the same time, unfortunately. The Insectoid Faction's Expanded mod also introduces a few new raid tactics for the insectoids, which are sappers, tunnelers, Siege, which are the burrows, infested meteorites, and gigalocus swarms. Sapper AI allows the insectoids to dig around your defenses and bypass them. 
the insectoids usually appearing from the edge of the map. Tunneling AI makes the insectoids tunnel up in random spots on the map, possibly even right in front of your base. Siege Burrows AI is similar to tunneling, but focuses on recurring attacks via the tunnels instead of a singular strike. Destroy the tunnels ASAP, or they'll keep spawning insects. Infested Meteorite AI is the opposite of tunneling, with insectoids dropping from the sky on meteors, but functionally achieves the same effect. Giga Locust swarms are also rather similar, with a number of Giga Locusts descending in a designated area around your base and wreaking havoc. Now that you know about infestations and insectoid enemies, let's talk about how to deal with them. That's what you came here for anyways, I'm sure. I'm certain that's what you came here for. Write down in the comments down below if you came here to this video because you got a swarm or an insect hive that you just cannot deal with, you need help. And then come to the Discord if this video didn't help and I will help you personally. Yep, that's a promise. I don't care how old this video gets, I'll help you out. Let me know. Discord. Like any disease, prevention is generally better than cure. Ideally, you'll want to avoid the conditions mentioned for hives to spawn, which are building a base near overhead mountain tiles and a temperature above negative 17 degrees Celsius. To spawn proof a base, all valid tiles need to be rendered invalid, with even a single warm tile being capable of causing infestations. Note that infestation can spread across tiles even if a wall is present between them, which tends to happen with late game infestations. This means that infestations can spawn inside your base, wreaking havoc. You can also bait insectoids to spawn elsewhere by manipulating the temperature and terrain of certain areas, then either ignore or booby trap these areas for free loot. In the base game, another way to minimize the risk of them spawning in your base is by strip mining many different mountain areas. By segmenting spaces under the mountain into rooms around 20 to 40 cells big, you create spaces for the infestations to spawn, which can lower the odds of one spawning in your base. Of course, spawn proofing isn't always possible or practical, so sometimes you'll need to take other measures. Insectoids are purely melee combatants, even with mod units in the mix, so you'll want to stick with mostly ranged weaponry and a few melee fighters thrown in for mountain-based combat. In open areas, just go with a full range death squad. Do not send your troops in one by one, they'll get swarmed and slaughtered. When fighting insectoids near a single choke point, use the melee blocking tactic. Send a soldier with sufficient sharp armor to block the point and have them engage the enemy in melee while others fire away with ranged weapons. If you are lucky, the soldier will survive as the enemy gets gunned down. If not, well, hopefully your gunners manage to take them down before getting overrun. Ideally though, you should have a few melee blockers on standby. Using fire is a useful tactic. Insectoids tend to cluster together in hordes, so one thrown molotov or incinerary bolt fired into a packed area will roast them alive. Bonus points if you have flammable furniture or materials there, as insectoids will attack those occasionally even when on fire, instead of running away. Of course, you'll want to keep your colonists out of the fire, but sometimes sacrifices have to be made. Keep in mind that killing insectoids this way won't leave any loot items behind, as the items will burn too. Be careful of the fire spreading to adjacent areas as well. To block the spread of fire, you can build or utilize rock walls which are non-flammable. I have been talking for quite a while now, so let's take a quick break. If you've found this video helpful or informative so far, let me know in the comments below if you have any feedback, questions, or suggestions, you can do so as well. Now let's get back to killing insectoids. Alternatively, if you don't want to burn insectoids directly, you can induce heat stroke in them by heating the room between 150 to 200 degrees Celsius. This can be accomplished by throwing molotovs at any empty spot in the room or adjacent rooms. It's more time consuming, but assuming the insectoids aren't already aggressive towards you, this prevents them from getting hurt by fire and attacking. You'll have to ensure the insectoids are already above this serious heat stroke threshold of 60% though, or they might recover and attack your pawns instead. You can also use explosives like the triple rocket launcher and mortars, assuming you're not under a mountain roof, to take out large groups of insectoids. The last option is to... run. No, seriously, sometimes it's better to pack up and rebuild your base elsewhere if the infestation has gotten out of hand. Infestations aren't all bad, of course. If you manage to deal with them, they generally leave behind valuable loot for the taking in the form of resources or technology. In the base game, you can gather insect jelly and glow pods from hives. Insect jelly is an ingredient that can be eaten raw or cooked in the recipes, while glow pods are used as a light source. The faction's expanded insect toys adds five new resources to the mix, royal jelly, insectoid chitin, spider silk, insect 
deltoid milk and insect eggs. Royal jelly is a substance used by queens to spawn new larvae. Any pawn consuming it receives a boost to their joy, nutrition, and immunity with a side effect of getting mildly addicted. The addiction side effects are mild, but it's withdrawal that's very dangerous. Do not let a pawn go into withdrawal over this substance. If you do, they'll turn into a mega spider. Unless you want a mega spider pawn, and then who cares? Insectoid chitin is taken from bug exoskeletons by butchering them and can be used as a type of metal for forging weapons, armor, and certain structures. Note that the insectoid's chitin provides high hit points and sharp armor resistance, but low blunt armor. It's also pretty ugly, so the beauty score won't be high. Spider silk is a type of fabric able to reflect light rays in a certain way. Spider silk is extremely beautiful and can boost an item's beauty score by four. It's also very flammable, though, so keep it away from any fires. Insectoid milk and insectoid eggs are food products, which you can only obtain from vat-grown insectoids. More on that in a bit. Insectoid eggs can be eaten raw, like regular eggs, but should ideally be cooked. Aside from resources, the mod also introduces quite a lot of cool new technology relating to the infestation, from shield devices so to insectoid breeding technology so you can raise your own insectoids via bioengineering. There are probably too many features to cover in depth here, so I'll briefly go over some of them. First, quest rewards. They're pretty nifty and provide a lot of benefits to combat and colony operations, making life easier for your colonists. You can earn these cool tech items by completing quests or finding and looting them from insectoid faction bases. Beware though, as I've mentioned, the insectoid hives aren't easy to take down, and you've gotta weigh the risks of acquiring shiny new technology versus losing pawns or resources, or just use the human wave tactic and then overwhelm the hives with sheer numbers. <laughs> Having said that, if you are sufficiently strong, you should try hunting some insectoids. There are even some weapons rewards in the mix, which can make subsequent assaults easier. There's also the Sonic Infestation Repeller, which you can buy from traders or earn from a quest. See this thing? It allows you to repel insectoids by it, pulsing every hour or so, meaning you can use it to lower the infestation risk nearby your colony. Yep, but wait, there's a catch. Using this device really pisses off the insectoids, so in exchange for fewer insectoids, you may see stronger herds assaulting your colony. And then there's bioengineering. As mentioned, it allows you to create your own insectoids by extracting genomes from wild creatures, not necessarily insectoids, and combining them in unique background insectoids. The genome types are worker, warrior, and royal, which should be pretty self-explanatory. You can put the resulting creations to use for combat, expanding your base, and even resource harvesting or production. The downside is that these genetically modified insectoids aren't as long-lived as their wild counterparts and can't reproduce, so you won't be able to start a proper hive of your own, unfortunately. As you can see, some of the insectoids are identical to those you'll encounter as enemies while others are completely new. There are some pretty useful bug types available via genetic engineering, like the Monstrosity, a powerful combat unit, and the Gigawig, which digs up valuable metals from the ground. If that isn't enough to satisfy you, you can take things one step further by using those same genomes to modify your opponents. When first inserting a genome into your pawns, the mutation result will be randomly picked from a list. For example, they can potentially mutate a bug's stomach, which reduces their hunger rate, or a venom gland, or their jaw, allowing them to spit acid at enemies. Regardless of which mutations a pawn develops, the mutation can be removed and transferred to other pawns with no further randomness at all. These are, uh, there, there are some downsides, of course. Most mutations have the side effect of causing pain for the affected pawn, which reduces their mood. Some produce even riskier effects, like the ventricular sleeve randomly having a chance of triggering heart attacks. Great stuff! So there you have it, a handy guide to infestations and how to deal with them. Always try to keep your colony clear of any infestations or it'll get overrun quickly. Infestations can be quite worthwhile in terms of rewards, but only if your pawns survive to begin with. Remember the only good bug is a dead bug. I hope you enjoyed this video and took away some handy tips from it. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for more cool videos. Time to get back to killing insectoids. On an added note, before we leave, I'd like to thank a specific few people for helping support this channel. Supporting Patreons, we have Semburto, Mighty Moose, The Spookiest Skeleton, James Walton, Zilch, Snobber, and Aragon.